Hello and welcome to the Survivor's Guide to Life podcast, episode 125. And it is the holiday season. Tomorrow for us is Christmas. And we wanted to have uh, a podcast to give you some gifts. We want to talk about some things that we think are gifts. They've been gifts to us. They can be gifts to you. Uh, we're probably going to talk a little bit about, uh, about the year about things that have happened, changes, mm-hmm. um, things we've seen and continue to see. And so we're going to probably just kind of talk today. We don't have like one thing we're going to say, but we have some ideas. And I think that's really good. I, this is, a, this is we're, we're at Christmas Eve day, and we usually, before we do these, we do some, quite a bit of preparation. This time I felt that that would not be the way to go. Because this is this is a, a culmination of a, a year of very difficult year uh, for all of us. I, I I myself lost my wife eight months ago, um, so we're not, we're not talking from a place that we don't know how difficult it can be, and it is for so many people. Absolutely. But the really interesting thing is that the things that we well, this is us. Now we want to pass this on to people that are not seeing it this way or can't seem to get their feet under them. That a lot of the things that seem like overwhelming challenges and and just the, the facts are so difficult and um, confrontive and uh, frightening, to see that as, now emotionally we get it, because we've got to deal with that too, but that the, to see it in a new way, to reframe it, which means, well, you look at that and you go, okay, but how about looking at it in a different way? That there are gifts that comes out of this. There are real ways, new ways of seeing things and learning that are really exciting. And they, here's what I realize, kind of realize. They don't come any other way except when you're going through struggles and suffering and pain. There is no other way to get the resilience that we've talked about. You can't get it from books. You can't get it from school. Um, you can't get it just from the areas that you're very comfortable with and have been comfortable with for a long time, and it probably functioned pretty well in. Things have changed. The comfort zone. The where comfort you, zone. Where you kind of know what you're doing, and you do feel like you're kind of in control. Absolutely. And then something happens. Right. And then you got an upheaval, and you got some chaos. Now, you know, that's an interesting thing, because I've seen a lot of people just go down hard behind that. And... I'll be honest with you, if anybody could go down hard, it was me, um, after taking care of my beloved for so long. And you know, it's interesting, it doesn't mean I don't feel a tremendous grief, but I have gained so much and I've learned so much during this time. And one of the greatest gifts that have come out of it for me is a deeper sense of gratitude and appreciation for what I do have. My Christmas day, my gifts are seeing life and appreciating it every day no matter what challenges come my way and to see it as a positive and an opportunity for some to do some new things that doesn't mean i always know the outcome i don't normally take a formulaic approach to life but i look at it and go i know that good will come out of this somehow and i got to tell you the way we see it here at the institute i see people it's very hard to tell how they're going to come out i'm not going to lie to you and i've been doing this 52 years where they are, I don't think they, they can't go back. They can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. And frankly, I'm not, I'm not God. I'm not a, I know I'm not a prophet. And I'll look at these and go, I don't know where they're going to go and what this, what's going to happen. You've lived that way a long time. I, I know we talk about you've had those ten principles for surviving and thriving. And one of them has always been take things one day or one step at mm. a time. Yeah. Just focus on what's in front of you. Well, I, you know, I forgot about that, and that's one of our key. That's one of our key formulas. If we're talking about formula, there were ways to. We wrote that in response to how to how to cope with real difficulties. I think we wrote that and rewrote it um, and updated it when the pandemic really has come on strong. It's, mm-hmm. I was just telling Jenny, people are starting to panic again, and the anxiety level out there isn't just about the holidays. It's about the pandemic and the Omicron variety of, of, flu, of virus. So, you know, I'm seeing it, and I realize these steps that we took were ways for people to see things, reframe things differently. Not easy. 
No, but nothing but good. necessary. Yeah, and the truth is, what, what, what really comes, something of real value, that's really important, that's life-changing, never comes because things go easily. It comes when there's real challenge. There's been so many scientific studies and psychological studies about this. And it's not the, not, you know, you look at these outfits and people who are successful, and it's a very interesting thing. The, one, the things that have gone too easily, don't give them the resilience they need when things get really tough. It's the folks that have been through so much that when things get tough, they know they can deal with it, they know they'll make it through in a very deep, intense way. It's a gift, and it came through struggle and suffering. Now, I do want to say this, and I'm not trying to be insensitive. I'm a certain type of person, and that is when I'm presented with challenges and difficulties, I don't run away. I'm the opposite. If I see emergency, if I see crisis, or difficulties, I go and respond to it. We talk so often about how, uh, we talk about hope in action, mm -hmm. about in action. if you're stuck, nothing will come. If you can take some action, there's hope for something better. Absolutely. And, you know, I can't claim to be the most empathetic person to folks that run away, folks that freeze and don't want to do anything. I look at it and go, come on, the challenges are right in front of you. You better snap out of this and, and start engaging and moving forward. I don't claim that's an easy message to get through to lots of people. I, I know it's not. No. And being that I'm not one of these people that gets frozen and, and, and petrified and para paralyzed, I'm not a person that runs away. When I do run into that, you know, I laugh at myself, <laughs> where's my empathy? Well, sometimes I don't have it. And I look at them and go, come on, you got to move forward. Look what's happening here. Mm -hmm. This could be a gift if you approach it and move forward and, and engage with it. Mm -hmm. um, now I can say that because I've had enough experience to know it, no matter how difficult it is, no matter how deeply pained or, or, or emotional I am, I know I'm going to get through it. I know that there's going to be light at the end of the tunnel and hope. I think that's something people learn through experience because I learned it with you. I was someone who would get stuck and paralyzed with something new or something I wasn't sure about. And as I took things on, got through them, came through the other side, I saw that it actually, what you're talking about actually works, but I don't think it's something that's very easy to convince someone in their head. I think they have to go through it. Yeah, they have to have mentors. I laugh, forgive me. I know Jenny a long time. She's been at my yeah. side for a long time. And no, she's telling the truth. And, um, I just am thinking one experience that we had when we were doing a training, a new area of training for combat crisis teams oh, yes. coming out of Iraq and Afghanistan, and they were a wreck. And uh, we this were This was ten years ago. Is it ten? Just, just is it to ten? tell everyone, this okay, was ten so years ago. Okay, she's doing this to protect herself, to defend herself. <laughs> anyway, we were told by the VA, these people need such and such. We worked months to make this great program, and we finally had 60 of them in New Jersey. It was the... Uh, Vision 3, they call it. It was, it was in New Jersey and New York. Anyway, we went in, and this is a funny story. She's really funny. She wasn't laughing at the time. But anyway, we presented what they told us that these people mm -hmm. needed. Very complete curriculum, oh, no, going no. through the list. Oh, we did it all. We were yeah. very efficient. Yeah. And in about two hours, I'm watching this group, and I'm going, this is not working. No. And I was very concerned because these people were in need. They had done tremendous work with wounded veterans coming over on the B-1, the, what are the uh, big bombers that are creating, uh, operating rooms, is it the B-1s? No, 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 that's a bomber, you, these yeah. are they were transfer planes. Yeah, I can't remember that, I'm sorry, I'm not in Air, I'm not in Air Force. Talking to Steve, but, our, Yeah, Steve who's a veteran. Our veteran. So forgive me, but anyway, um, we went, we saw, and I'm not one of those people that will stand in front of people for three days and not make a connection. That does not work. And after about two hours, I went, I am in such trouble because what we were told these people are getting angrier and more upset all the time. And I remember I just stopped the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And I said, this isn't working, is it? This really is not responding to what you need. Mm -hmm. They went into an uproar. And these were soldiers. These were people that were combat soldiers that had been through a lot. Mm -hmm. And I realized I am in such trouble because I am not going to stand here and lay something on them that these people deserve better, no matter what the supervisors say. 
But anyway, I look around and my assistant... <laughs> Running the PowerPoint yeah, out in the audience. She got so scared <laughs> at what was coming at us. I let, and all of a sudden I see her it's time backing away break. and disappearing toward... The bathroom. Yes, very quickly. <laughs> and I'm going, what? She was, that's how scared she was. <laughs> On there, today, she's the opposite. Yes. She's really great at this. She has more character, more guts than... I want to say gender, da da da, than a man or a woman. So she stays in there and she grows and learns and moves forward no matter what. So but this what, was a frightened woman. This I was. was so, yes. But what I did was I did come back. Every time. And, and, and as time goes on, I came back faster or I didn't run as often. Hmm. And, you know, I, I don't think if you had just told me these things over and over again, if I hadn't gone through it and learned it, how important it is, and I know we talk about this, and we need to keep talking about it a lot, how important it is to hang in there, no matter how scared or difficult things are. Absolutely. Now, you know, under stress, we know, and we've, gosh, we live in it. Now we know m most people are living in it, are touched by it, um, how hard it is. And one of the things that it does is triggers old reactions from our, also during that time, of what we were when we had trauma or we had something happen in our past or many things our old reactions come up very strong and uh we call it triggering part traumatic whatever mm -hmm. what we've learned is a lot of people really indulge that and believe it contaminates the reactions in the present and they don't know it at the time because they're reliving their past during it these feels things. very real yeah. yeah and they usually make a mess well I think that what we really, what you're really looking at with Jenny, and I, I, she deserves accolades. You could see her triggering going on, how scared she was, and what she used to do. I, I know Jenny really well. We've taught her to shoot, you know, and uh, she wasn't always a natural shooter. And I remember we went to a, a training, and um, I looked around. I had and to walk away from. She a was, while. she wasn't walking. Away, she was running away. Yeah. And but I knew Jenny, and I know. Pretty soon. She'll come back, I'll and come back. don't chase her. But she's very dramatic when she runs. <laughs> it makes me laugh, but she, she's not laughing. No. She turned out to be very, she could do a, ver, a lot of versatile shooting with different weapons, and she wound up loving it. So I didn't chase her anymore, but when she gets scared, she's, mm -hmm. it's like I usually go, okay, here she goes, yeah. but she'll come back. Yeah. She's a very strong woman who knows how to persevere and grow and um, change. And, and move forward. And that really is how it happens. Like you said, there are things that become possible in our lives only if we go through the struggle. And and Absolutely. you were talking about reframing. And I think that's what I said at the beginning. I think we're offering people some gifts today. And I want that. That to be. idea of reframing is a gift. It, it's so important, too. I mean, life can really look rough. And throw a lot of negative situations at us. I mean, brutally. I can talk for myself as well as so many pe people that we help. There are certain things in life that are very dark and difficult. And not only, not just because we've chosen it, it's just part of life. Overwhelming. No question about it. And yet, to take an approach of in engaging with it, not running away, dealing with it, brings such improvement and healing over a period of time, as long as you have that attitude of forward movement. Um, and I call that, I would call that reframing it right. Now, I, you know, we talk a lot about caregivers who we love, and we've been them. I just saw some old pictures or videos of myself, and it was painful because I have definitely become a very committed caregiver. Mm -hmm. yes. And we're, we're surrounded by caregivers. Um, and I see how hard it is, what a life-changing thing it can be. But I also see that, yes, you feel the pain. I saw it when I was... Interesting how objective I can f act and behave when they need it. But that doesn't mean it wasn't extremely painful. It just means I don't let that stop me. I don't let that make me run away. I don't let it free, freeze me and go into paralysis. I'm the kind of person that looks at that and goes, I, you've got to do what's, what, what's, it, what needs to be done. This is a gift. Now, things are difficult out there. I see it again. 
I don't know where this virus is going to go, but I'm already seeing people getting re, almost reverting back to a panic state. And the hospitals are filling up. The uh, medical workers are either they're, they're not showing up. They don't want to be there anymore. Where the school they're they're understaffed, and yet mm -hmm. the, the same thing's happening again: flooding of hospitals, flooding of medical facilities. People are really scared. There's no question about it. So I feel it and I see it and I'm thinking, now what have we learned from the last pandemic that can help us get through this one better without panicking? What can we do not to overreact, just to take the normal precautions which you're called for? Um, but what can we do in a more positive way, not to let it terrify us, to really, you know, jolt us and turn us into, you know, just filled with fear. But what can we do to do something positive from all of this? That would be a gift we could give to everybody out there today. It's an opportunity to change. Mm -hmm. And boy, does it bring about changes. There's no question about it. But those changes could turn out to be so positive that wouldn't have come any other way. I want to talk to the people today who this is very hard to hear. They probably listen to it and say, well, that's nice, but uh, that's not me. Mm -hmm. Or I'm really overwhelmed this this Christmas season. I can't I'm dealing see my way through this. No, nope. yep. and I'm dealing with such hard, difficult challenges. Mm -hmm. No one. I don't mean to sound dismissive at all. No. Oh, I know what I that feels that. like. Believe me. But what I am saying, as a gift, is a gift of encouragement and hope. That even though things seem really dark right now, don't go into such negativity and go into such paralysis or running away that you don't deal with this issue, whatever's at, you know, at your doorstep. Engage with it. Take it on and know that there will be positive outcomes even though it's not apparent. And don't let yourself get so overwhelmed that you don't choose anything and you just stay there while these things around you are happening and you're not taking part in it. You're not doing what needs to be done. I'm, I'm, this is my voice to you is to encourage you to, to, to move forward, to have some faith, to have some hope that you may not know what the outcome is going to be. If you're triggered, your old reactions when you were younger are going to come up and you're just going to be a frightened child. But this is different. There is going to be something positive that comes out of this for you. Maybe it is a time for you to really reevaluate your life and how you've been. Maybe this is really a time for you to look at this challenge that seems to be so overwhelming and frightening as an opportunity to step beyond your fear and your old reactions and find a new way of, of being. I'm, I'm not saying it's going to come easy, but I'm also not somebody who's going to pander to that. And I know it'd be easy to go really emotionally co compassionate about your suffering, but there's another part to it. And that part is... Pick yourself up if you're knocked down and keep going and learning from the challenges. There will be good that comes out of them. In your darkest moments, there's a, you know, I am a Christian personally and I'm a spiritual man. Not necessarily just religious, but spiritual. And there is a devotional that I read that talked about grief. And it was so clear and right on because I was going through just, just what they're writing about. And they said that God will shine, there'll be rays of light in your darkest moments. And I can tell you, that wasn't just words, that is real life experience. And it, it didn't have to encourage me because already it, it was happening. That in my darkest moments, there was, there was something good that was coming out of it. A strength that I didn't know I had. A selflessness that I didn't even know I had a capacity to have. Um, strength, hope. In my, in my lowest, weakest moments. Yes, that's a spiritual side, but yet it's true. Now, I, the more moments we're talking about are probably some of the darkest in my life. And yet, out of them has come so much for me so far. And we help people all the time. And we tell them the same thing. Don't quit. Don't give up. And any of you who are even considering, and we're hearing, the reason I'm bringing this, we're hearing this too much, suicide. We're, I've never heard more people suicidal before, as, and at 52 years that I'm hearing now. Don't let that happen. No. Don't take that option. You're going to see, there'll be another day, 
and there'll be something that will come out of it that will get you moving forward again. So don't fall prey to that kind of negativity. I hope that what we're talking about today is a gift. Christmas time to me is a special time. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to do this podcast today because, yes, we had other things to do. We could have done an- another day. I want the message to be timely for now. I want you to take what we're offering you as a gift of support and encouragement. The expertise, yes, we can give you that too. But today, I just want to let you know, you're going to make it. You're going to get through it. As difficult as the situation may seem, there'll be good that comes out of it. Hang in there. That is a message that is a gift. I hope so. I think that that's the best way for us to leave you for this episode. The Survivor's Guide to Life is sponsored by Sonoma Coast Trauma Treatment, a 501c3 public charity. Their website is sctraumatreatment.org, and we depend on them to keep us going here. So please visit and donate. They have a donate button. We are the Survivor's Guide to Life.com on all of the uh, podcast outlets. We have our own YouTube channel. We have Facebook and Instagram. Peter and I can be reached at 707-781-3335 or Jenny at BernsteinInstitute.com. Happy Holidays. Merry Christmas. Take care. Stay safe. We'll see you again soon. Stay well.